A common question that uh, students often ask their math teachers is, which one is X and which one is Y? When dealing with uh, a word problem that deals with some sort of relationship. So I'm going to try and uh, dispel some of the confusion here between uh, determining which is X and which is Y in a word problem. Some problems will tell you, other problems you'll have to figure it out for yourself. So let's start off here by introducing something you may have heard about in a science class or maybe another math class, uh, the independent and the dependent variables, okay? The independent variable changes the dependent variable. And this in a math word problem is going to be your X variable, okay? So the independent variable is going to be your X variable. Now the dependent variable, which is typically uh, is typically going to represent your y variable. This one depends or is changed by the independent variable. Now I have another way of writing this that I think helps some people when you're doing this, and this would be that x. So I don't always refer to them as independent and dependent variables in math class, even though you do that in science. I refer to it, to it as x changes y. So the one variable the x variable is changing the y variable. And sometimes if you're confused on which one is which, um, it, it helps to read them out both this way. And we'll talk about how to read this out in a second. And again, this is the independent variable and this is the dependent variable in the problem. So let's look at a, uh, just two quick examples to try this out. Okay, so the price of gasoline rises and falls throughout the year. And you may not know, but uh, in the summertime, gas is more expensive and all that kind of stuff because more people are traveling. Um, but to figure out which is the independent and dependent variable, let's read this two ways. First, we want to identify what the two variables are. And in this case, I'll take I'll let you take a second to pause it if you'd like to determine what are the two things that are changing. Okay, and if you didn't pause it or if you paused it, we're welcome back. Um, the price of gasoline is going to be our first or one of our variables so let's add that in here so the price of gasoline rises and falls throughout the year so the other one would have to be the time of year that could be you know the month depending on the problem whatever it is so if we were looking for which one represented x and which one represented y in this problem if we were dealing with some sort of ordered pair Let's read this two different ways. Okay, let's start by making this one x and this one y, and we're just going to use this phrase up here to see which one makes sense. So the price of gasoline changes the time of year. I don't know. I don't know if that makes too much sense. Let's try flipping them around. Let's put the x down here and the y over here. Let's see if this makes a little more sense. The time of year changes the price of gasoline. Yeah, that, that makes a whole lot more sense. So we've just identified now that the X variable would represent the time of year and the Y variable would be the price of gasoline. Okay, and if we had an ordered pair, we would now know what order these would have to go in. We would know that the time of year would have to go in your X spot and the price of gasoline would have to go in your Y spot. Okay, more on that later. Now, the next one, the more cigarettes someone smokes, the higher chance they have of developing lung cancer. And again, we'll take a second here to write down what the variables are. Well, what are the two things that are changing? So let's put one of them as, I'm going to abbreviate here, we'll do cigarettes smoked. And maybe we'll put the number of cigarettes smoked here just to be a little more specific. Um, and then we could put the chance probably a percent chance of lung cancer. Okay, and we can go ahead and fill that in. Now, we're, again, we're going to look for which one is X and which one is Y using this X changes Y sentence. So I'm going to start here by just filling in the first one is X and the second one is Y, and let's see if that makes sense. Okay, the number of cigarettes you smoke changes your chance of lung cancer. Okay, you can think about that. It sounds pretty good to me, but let's try it both ways just to be sure. Sometimes it sounds better the other way. So let's put this one as Y, and this one is X, and we'll read it one more time. So we'll read the X changes Y sentence. The chance of lung cancer 
changes the number of cigarettes that you smoke. Not nah, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So let's go back to the original one and let's put the first one as the X and the second one as the Y. So if we had an ordered pair, you know, with an X and a Y, the first number in our ordered pair that represents X would have to deal with a number of cigarettes that somebody smoked. And then the second variable, the Y, would have to deal with a percent chance of lung cancer. Okay, and this is just going to be uh, an example of how you can tell which one is X and which one is Y, you know, in a word problem. They won't always give you, um, you know, all this big sentence. They might just go right into telling you what the numbers are, or what the ordered pairs are later uh, in the problems you'll be, you'll be doing. So one more time here. Um, we're going to look at an example if we're checking out a graph how to tell which one is X and which one is Y. And we'll also kind of talk about the meaning of certain ordered pairs in this example as well. Okay, graphs are easy, so don't overthink a graph. Remember that the X axis is down here and the Y axis is down here. So when we're talking about an ordered pair, the X is going to represent the minutes studying for a test. Okay, so that would be here. That would represent the minutes studying for a test. And then the y-axis represents the number of questions incorrectly answered. That would be that number here. So whenever we have an ordered pair, those are going to be the, what the two numbers represent. So let's talk about the ordered pair at, um, I don't know, let's go with ordered pair at B and, and just kind of talk for a second about what it means. So think for a second, uh, and I'll let you pause the video again if you would like here to think about what does the ordered pair at B represent? So write it out and think about what it represents. Okay, and now that we've come back here, let's write the ordered pair first. So we always go X in the ordered pair first. So B would be the point 20 and then three, that's the ordered pair. And now in this case, we know that 20 is gonna represent minutes. So this person at, at B, so, and this would be a specific person here. So let's say student B, so studied for 20 minutes. So student B studied for 20 minutes and got three questions wrong on their test. And that's how you can take an ordered pair and draw the meaning from it, okay? We could also think about, well, which student did the best? Okay, we could look at D over here, and D did not miss, so down here would be zero. D did not miss any question and studied for 80 minutes. So D maybe is a little bit of an overachiever here, but that's not, not a bad thing when you're uh, studying for your math classes, of course. So we've got uh, D studied for 80 minutes, so if we were using the ordered pair at D, that would be 80, and got zero questions incorrect. And I kind of just talked about the meaning of that. D studied for 80 hours and got 100% on their test because they didn't miss any questions. And that's how you can kind of use this the words here to try and um, build some meaning from ordered pairs and determine which is X and which is Y in a word problem. Again, one more time, we can look at this. Even if we didn't have this graph to tell which one was X and which one was Y, the minutes spent studying for a test, X, changes the number of questions that you get incorrect. If you read it the other way, the number of questions a student answered incorrectly does not change how much you spend studying for the test. You already studied at that point.